Good evening, all, and welcome to Spiritual Talk. Good evening, Paul. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Hi, Leanne. Good. We thought we'd swap it around this week, keep you all on your toes. (laughs) (laughs) Another Wednesday and another great guest this evening, and I really can't wait to bring this gentleman on. And I'm, I'm, I'm very flattered this gentleman has agreed to come on. Very lucky. Yeah. So yeah. would you like me to introduce our guest? Just go for it straight. Well, well, before we do, actually, we need to make sure that we are live because, guys, Facebook can kick us out. Please say hello to, if you're sitting at home watching us. Please come on and say a quick hello so we know we're live and everything's going well. I've got old oh, Carol said hello. Hi, Carol and Sean. Hi, Sean. Not seen you for a long time, my friend. Hope things are well with you. Oh, I'm not having That's anything good. Vicky, up. Vicky's on. Brilliant. Brilliant. Oh. Have you not got them come up yet? No. You are Hi, definitely I apologize, lying. everyone. I've lost you all. Hello, oh, yeah. anyway. Okay. We're, yeah, Tana. Hi, Tiny. Tana's coming on. We've got lots of people That's coming on. Facebook as well. Teresa as well. Hi, Teresa. Brilliant. People are coming on, so we'll be going live. So let's get our guest in. Yes. So this week's guest This is a world-renowned medium. He's a tutor and spiritual healer. He's a tutor at the Arthur Finley College, and he has been teaching and demonstrating mediumship for over 30 years. He recently appeared in a Netflix series called Surviving Death. And this week's person we are interviewing is like, guess who? It's Colin Bates. Good evening, Hello. Colin. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Isn't this awesome? Lovely to be with you and to share this time together. Well, thank, thank you. you for coming on Green to be on, Colin. It's brilliant. Absolutely. And we know you're you're you've not been well. So um hopefully you'll be no coughing and you'll get through the evening okay. But if you suddenly disappear with a coughing fit, everyone will know what's going on. So it's fingers good, crossed. Honestly, it's all good, good. really. Good, 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 Indeed. good. Brilliant. So, Colin, um, one of the things that we did for season two, we asked a lot of people that that watch um, Spiritual Talk, and we asked them who they wanted to have on, and some of the guests, and some of this such a wide range of mediums and modalities out there, and the name that kept cropping up was yours. So, it is a real pleasure to have you on. So, the first thing we want to know: How did it all start for you? How did you become a medium? Well, I, I have a very interesting, um, a very interesting story, really, because it started when I was three, because okay. when I was three, I contacted viral meningitis, and yeah. I was very, very poorly, and I started to see animals, and I was in hospital for a very long time, and I wasn't expected to live, and then I did, even when I was born, uh, there were complications. But then at that age, I started to see things. And my mother often told me I would disappear down the garden to see the people who lived at the bottom of the garden. And I can remember just walking around with a tiger walking beside me. And I can remember that even from that age being a part. And then nothing really happened. Then when I was about six, I was going to school and we walked to the village school. I lived in the country. And I was about to cross the road and all of a sudden this voice shouted, stop. And I stopped immediately. And a second later, a lorry came right around the corner. And if I hadn't stopped, I'd have gone. But yet I heard the voice implicitly telling me. And so there was quite a few experiences of the spirit. But when I was about 16, my mother, she took me to a spiritualist church where she dragged me by the ear. And apparently I was their first punk rocker because I had all this blonde hair coming down the ear, all these earrings and everything hanging out where it shouldn't. And uh, it made such an impression upon me. And the reason my mother wanted to go was because she never got to say goodbye to her father, um, my granddad. And the first message came to my mother and she immediately said, it's your father here. You never got to say goodbye. And the evidence was phenomenal. And then together we stayed. And uh, so we used to go together every week and and just sit near the second row back from the front uh, for many years in Huntingdon Spiritualist Church. Uh, Beautiful. Just what a welcome to to have that. 
And then I started to sit in circle. I was invited to sit in circle. And then I started to work with healing. And I used to visit the villages and go to the people who couldn't come to church once a week and would go to all the different houses and we'd sit and have tea and do healing and, and work within that. And then about 1989 or 1990, uh, a wonderful lady called Mrs. Pat Thomas uh, took me to the college, the Arthur Finley College. And I was very fortunate because Gordon Higginson was still alive then. And I got to study with him for the last three years of his life. And people such as Ursula Roberts uh, was at the college then. And Paul Jacobs was just starting. I was in his first group when he first became a tutor, uh, together with Simon James. And one thing that I've always been very fortunate with is I've always been nurtured. I've always been loved. And I'm always very grateful for that. But even when I went to the college, because I had nothing, I had no money, barely the clothes I stood up in. And the college actually offered to pay for my learning. And I've always remembered that. So when I do my courses and classes now, I always have um, uh, several students where there are scholarships because of the kindness, you know, of people. And so then I came to the college and then studied and then became a full tutor in the 90s, I believe it was then. And then I've been there as a tutor ever since. And then I was ordained into the ministry of the Spiritualist National Union in 2014, I believe. Mm -hmm. But what is so wonderful, you see, with the spirit is that it's the power of life. It's not about death because there is no death. And so really mediumship itself is the natural pathway and understanding of the continuation of life. And I think what people don't always realise is communication is of the heart. It's of compassion. And the greatest power in mediumship is called love. And that is the power of the universe itself. It's the power of creation. And when we move and we blend and we become a part of creation, there you will find the spirit world because love creates the miracle, but it is the medium and it is the medium who is the mediator between heaven and earth. And so as the medium, what we do is we create a time and a moment for the spirit to speak. And, you know, I think sometimes we forget that the spirit is as alive as you and I and that we are working with real people both physically and within the spirit world. Can you imagine when you're connecting, for instance, to the spirit world and somebody hasn't seen their daughter or spoken to their daughter for 20 years? And you imagine that emotion, that, that wonderful sense of connection that takes place within that moment. And also, you see, it comes into uh, many aspects, you know, because mediumship itself comes under many different categories. For instance, we have the intuitive, we have the psychic, we have prophecy, we have seership, we have um, mysticism, we have the power of healing, and all this comes together within that sacred moment of, of, of mediumship. There's most wonderful medium called Eileen Garrett mm -hmm. in the 1800s, and she was one of the most tested scientifically tested mediums of her age and she speaks of the super conscious mind where the past the present and the future exists as one and that really you know all mediumship is an altered state of consciousness and so my own connection with it really started from a very early age but from I would say from the 90s, I had a very bad accident at the end of the 90s. I was in nursing and I ruptured all the tendons at the base of the spine and it never healed. It, it still hasn't healed. So um, I have problems sometimes with walking and, and, and everything else. But because I couldn't work in, in the profession I was working, in a way it opened another door and that door was into being the teacher. So I had to leave that form of employment, which was extraordinary, I have to say, um, nursing the elderly 
and being at end of term life really that's that's what i've always done you know seen people through and um so then from that point that point in time i started to devote the whole of my life really so that's been the last 20 odd years although teaching for much more and one thing that it gave me you see is this wonderful opportunity to live your passion yeah and so i get the opportunity to to do that and now of course because the way of the world and the way of times have changed over the last two years we now have this this wonderful um wonder web where we are able to communicate and come together in this way and so there is no space there is no time science has now proven this non-local reality and that the spirit manifests universally and i and i truly believe this you see that now mankind is beginning to seek to find their own freedom and that the restrictions of the past no longer hold and that the people that are being born into this life and world and the generations that come after us will seek their own spiritual freedom and the right to find the path that's right for them and that's why although i am a spiritualist and i'm a spiritualist minister through and through yeah i also honor all religion all life and all aspects of life because one thing that this time has taught us is that compassion and love is universal and that more and more what we've got to bring in into mediumship into life into that which we teach is the universal connection that we all come from the same source the great mystery of all life and that this journey that we are on is to seek to find our own personal god our own personal creation and to embrace that because really that is the journey there's this wonderful saying that god breathed out and mankind was born and then god began to breathe in and we began this great vast journey back to the source of, of all life and the energy of all life. I've always been a great believer in not just the mediumistic, but the spiritual aspect, because I teach both uh, as it comes together. Because for me, the two pathways bring the balance within the mediumistic. And then also understanding the degrees of sensitivity and how to work within our own sensitivity to embrace our own spirit because really that's what we do you know i can't teach you to be a medium what i can teach you or show you the way is to find yourself because that's the transformation you know the transformation is the realization you see that we are eternal beings of light and that within us we walk the corridors of time for we have been before and we will be again but not as we are now and that the lineage that you and i have of the spirit is endless and that before you and i were born and that's incredible before you and i were born there were conversations within the spirit world where there were those wonderful guardians of the spirit the guides the helpers the angels call them what you will who said, I will continue my ministry on earth through you, my medium, and I will walk this earthly pathway with you. I will inspire you. I will bring forth my teaching. And as we bring forth the teaching, we then minister to the people. Because that really is what mediumship is. You know, it's ministering to the people and that we are all seeking to find our place of belonging and over these last years these last two years that's come more and more into my mediumship because i haven't traveled and i'm 60 now can you believe such an age i've wow. reached a point now where now it's time to really embrace more and more that within myself 
and 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 to bring that more and more in, in into the teaching you see and and so it's been quite a journey to this point and i've been very privileged within it because not only the ability to teach at the college which will come again i am sure um, as time moves forward but to visit many of the countries of this world and to know that it doesn't matter where you go it's the heart it's the soul it's the dance of the spirit that brings us together yeah not the yeah. belief it's the spirit itself so whichever religion you follow whichever pathway inspires you and moves you it is unique it is individual and that's the glory of the teaching you see because no two mediums will ever work in quite the same way doesn't function you see so what we what we do is that we take time and opportunity and then we suggest things to you and say right now now take you to a point now experience what has that experience taught you what have you learned within that moment of experience for that is where the true learning takes place and then when we listen when we talk when we discuss all of a sudden something here just seems to ignite oh yes that's what it is and then we follow it and, and we move with it but mediumship is ever growing it is ever changing and i truly believe that there we are coming into a time now where there is more and more of a need a resurgence of the spirit so many people have lost people who have passed to the spirit where they haven't been able to hold them to speak to them and more and more now people are coming forward and saying i need to know my mum's okay i need to know my father's okay i never got to say goodbye and that's where the healing comes you see because within that moment of bringing the two worlds together, we are able just to bring those words in the simplistic form. I'm here. I love you. I never said goodbye, but true love is never having to say goodbye. And I'm still with you. And that's extraordinary. That's the power to change the world. Because can you imagine, you see, if for one moment everyone in the world stopped and began to realise that there is a golden thread of the spirit that runs through you and I and all the peoples and all the nations of this world, for we all come from this great mystery, this great source of all life. And immediately there would be, within a second, this spiritual revolution that would change the world. And so, unfortunately, we have been born into a society in many countries where we are told this is what you should believe, this is what you do. And in a way, it's taken away the natural power. But we're starting to find it again. It's starting to come more and more into the natural way of life. And what we must be careful of, and I really do mean this, is that with this age of technology and the great God of Google, we don't lose it. Because if we're not careful, mankind will begin to lose the natural power, the natural knowing, the understanding. And more and more we're relying upon this sense of what it tells us rather than what we feel to be right yes i i do believe that i don't know how you feel yeah. but but i do believe that because one of the things that we learn within this transformational journey because it is a transformational journey is that we begin to own it we begin to accept our responsibilities we begin to make our own decisions and even when those decisions may be wrong we demand the right to make them. And that's what being a human being is all about. It's about recognising that we are an individual, but we are also part of this great collective, this universal power, this wonderful creative force in whom we move and have our very being. 
the power of the spirit because it is it is the guiding force of you and i yeah. but we are conditioned to live in this physical life and to be within the physical mind and you see when we are within the physical mind the subtle realms are muted yeah because it's dominating everything yeah. so one of the things that we teach more than anything is how to find that quiet the stillness to move our consciousness beyond mind beyond self to this freedom where the past the present the future and everything exists within this glorious moment of experience and so within it you see everything is possible and the transformation is really the transformation of life because you know the pathway of the sensitive is not always an easy one oh no it is not always an easy one i have to say and sometimes we have to learn to forgive sometimes we have to learn to love and within that you see we start to heal we start to become stronger we start to find and own ourselves again you see and and so the journey of 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 teaching the mediumship itself has many different levels within it understanding our sensitivity understanding our divine connection to the power of all life using the sacredness of your soul because mediumship is of the soul you know many people say well i want to help people i want to do this i want to do that but actually there is only one reason and that is your soul is crying out and your soul has a facet within it that is destined to be within the spirit and working within the spirit so i believe and i believe this truly that where you are now is actually where you were meant to be and that even before you and i were born that was known within the power you know there was a wonderful medium jj morse incredible automatic writer and he had uh, one of his guiding influences was called ten seng tay and he was asked did you choose your medium and he said no i chose his mother so before the child was even born unto the earth the spirit was there gordon higginson for instance his mother was told when she was 14 she would give birth to the son who would dedicate the whole of his life to the ministry of the spirit so you see we may believe that we've come into something by chance <laughs> but i i really go beyond that yeah i would i would even say to you that there are times within this life and world when people come into our lives be it for a reason a season or a lifetime and they repoint the way back again and then all of a sudden it's as if it's there because you see it can't leave you it's a part of who you are <clears throat> and sometimes we have to just say well this is who i am this is this is a part of me and now i'm going to dedicate my time to unfold it and this can be when you're seven or even when you're 70. there is no fixed time i remember a lady coming to me and she just started crying and i don't know how old she was i suppose in her 50s and she said i wish I wish I'd known of this. I feel as if I've wasted all of these years. And I said, my dear one, I said, what have you done then with your life? She said, well, she said, I grew up, I got married, I had my children. And I said, just stop there. I said, don't you realize that one of the greatest things you can ever do is to give time to create and nurture another soul within this existence? How can you say that, that your time is wasted? Because it isn't you know the greatest acts of mediumship are done over the garden fence standing in a bus stop you know and just saying to someone really oh i'm so sorry and then within that healing takes place someone tells you they've just lost their father and all of a sudden these words come upon upon the wings of love and we send a thought to them and we say well i know that he's still with you 
and it just unfolds, you see, in its most natural form. And I think what we have to be mindful of now is that a lot of mediumship is now being taught by the mind. You've got to do this, you've got to find this, you've got to create that, you've got to do this, this, this and this. Well, you will create the something that is the most marvellous, but you won't bring the essence of the spirit. What you bring is facts and figures. Yeah. So mediumship needs to be an essence of nature. It needs to be nurtured. And so this is where we speak about the essence and the presence of the spirit. And that is from the power. It is from the soul. It is not from the mind. So we have to be really careful, you see, because you could start saying things and they may be valid, but it may not be what the spirit wants to say. So, Colin, you've touched on so many different aspects of mediumship. There's so many, I've been writing things down quickly to try and keep up with you. And you've, you've put it across such in a loving way and such an understandable way. Um, you've kind of also answered my questions of, as you've been going along. But there are a lot of people that listen to spiritual talk that are themselves on their own mediumistic journey or developing themselves. Is it something you can give them, maybe something that happened in your own journey, little pitfalls to avoid, things to help? Is there anything you could advise people on their journey? Yes, what a wonderful question. Really, one of the main things is to recognise the pathway of the sensitive and to recognise that there is an aspect within self that is sensitive. Mm -hmm. I mean, look, for instance, at, you know, our own sensitivity, people, time, places. And that what we don't always necessarily realise is that we are the doorway to our own sensitivity, not the spirit. We are. Yeah. And that, that glorious word, no, is wonderful because it can bring us into this state of quietness where we are non-receptive to people's time and energy. And it was one thing that I had to learn very early in my, in my mediumship. And that in a way was a discipline so that when I'm working, I'm open, receptive. When I'm in prayer, I'm within that state of being. But when that time is not there, then I'm not receptive. I'm not, I would never dream, for instance, of you know, meeting somebody and then all of a sudden starting to pick up on them because I think it's an intrusion. You know, if somebody started mucking about with my aura, I'd say, well, buy me dinner first and I may let you. <laughs> you know, you don't do that sort of thing yeah. because it's private. And, and, and so, Absolutely. you know, the power of the empath, for instance, can heighten our own sensitivity. And that really, you know, the foundation that we teach is about understanding your own sensitivity and that you need to really work on finding your place of belonging, anchoring yourself, and then realizing that the doorway to your sensitivity is through the power of the heart and the soul. Yeah. And look, it's really, it's like the Lotus, you know, and, and as the Lotus begins to open, you know, you've got the, Om Mani Padme Om. Hail to the joy, the jewel in the lotus, the light of all being waiting to unfold. And so your sensitivity is like the lotus and that you, you breathe deep, you create the sacredness of it and you bring it into being. And then when that time is finished, you move into a time of gratitude and you move into a time of quietening your energy so that you're no longer receptive yeah. to people, to time and places. And I think what people don't always often realise is there's a great emphasis is on being open and being closed. Yeah. Well, if you're closed, you'd be dead <laughs> because you can't be. Yeah. Um, the energy centres are in a constant state of change, earth, air, fire and water. And then when you move into that moment of sensitivity, you bring it into being by the power of your will, you see? And the power of your will combined with love creates wisdom. It's the learning process of, 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 of life. So, yeah. so one thing that perhaps I've learned more and more is that we're not physically designed to be in a hypersensitive state. 
24 7 because it can lead to emotional imbalance and then it can lead to problems real problems you know sometimes i have people coming to see me and they can't go into a room of other people because they're overwhelmed by yeah. their energy they can't go shopping because immediately they feel and so what you've got to do is 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 to really just educate that sense of you are in charge of your energy your energy and sensitivity is not in charge of you and that was yeah. one thing that i had to really you know really to learn and there will always be times you see you can say well you know i accept that but not every situation is the same exactly yeah and so you handle each situation as you move into the time of your sensitivity and then as you move into that time for me it's like a joy it's a light within me yeah. and then i take a deep breath i connect to the earth my place of belonging and then i reach for that power which is greater than myself the universe yeah. and the power of the heaven the earth the sea the sky becomes one and the vision is there and you see this is where the naturalness of mediumship comes in because it's also about the need you see what is your need and you notice i use the word need not want mm. because everything is known to the power and therefore, when you move into that moment, the power already knows what you need. And, and, and that's that's the most wonderful thing, you see. So you can say, you can say, well, you've got to do this, this, this and this. Well, yes, you have in a way. But the most greatest thing is to listen. You know, one of the strongest gifts of this age is the clear cognizance, it's the clear knowing. Yeah. Honest, truly. And the feeling and the knowing creates atmosphere. You know, even if you see a vision, you don't know what it means. But the feeling and the knowing will take you through the vision yeah. to the understanding. And then you've got it, you see. So really, I would say understanding, you know, your own sensitivity and begin to realise that actually there are times when you need to be separate within the world. Even though you're surrounded by everyone that you know and love, that there's something that calls you to the quiet, to the silence, you know. And if you look at, for instance, the Parthia, the, the oracle, um, look at the priests, the prophets, the seekers, the seers, they all lived separate lives. The wise woman of the village, they all had to be just a little bit outside of society. They all lived by the sacred spring because that connects the emotions to the upper conscious, to the super conscious. Mm -hmm. And so you'll always find you love to be near water. You may not want to be in it, but you like to be near it. So, um, and, and really learn to, to listen. I mean, in the ancient world, they used to sit for seven years in the silence to understand the power. Well, you know, I can't, seven minutes and my mind <laughs> picking and so if you can imagine what they did then and what we do now um it's a little bit different you see and this is where perhaps gordon higginson had a, a more of a point when he used to teach and what he always said was that you know what you should learn first is to become one with the power yeah what you should learn is really how to become one with it and then learn how to communicate well yeah. you know everybody wants to speak to grandma but they want to do it by saturday and and you know i can appreciate that because that's that's the instantaneousness of the world i can't even say instantaneousness isn't that marvelous i don't think the word is it but it should be and the problem is um i'm still learning now i still find things i'm I'm not going to show you the office because it's a tip, but <laughs> I'm still learning now. And my teaching changes every single time. Isn't me. that what's beautiful about spirit? No matter how long you're on this earth plane, how many lifetimes you have, you'll always be learning. No one will ever know everything there is to know. I, d I just think that that is so true because it's a wonderful, you know, it's, it's, it's a wonderful aspect. And, you know, there's times when we struggle. 
you know, each one of us. Yeah. And, and what we have to remember is that the power is not there to give to everyone, just mm -hmm. it is also to uplift, to strengthen, to renew us. Yeah. And, you know, if you ask many mediums, they're at the bottom of the list. And what you've got to remember is with your own sensitivity, with your own sense of healing, your own sense of strength, you also have to look after yourself yeah. and, and work on that balance within ourselves. When we are strong, the world is strong. Mm. When we are not strong, it is a time to nurture. It is a time to just say to the spirit, I'm here, help me. Yeah. You know? I tend to do that at night. I like I'll have a busy day doing healing or whatnot. And sometimes I'm kept up for like four or five nights in a row and then I'll go do you know what? I've given a lot of myself now I need you to give me something absolutely back. please let me sleep and renew me while I'm there <laughs> totally because you know within you know within such moments we commune with the power mm -hmm. and part of our own journey is about really the relationship that we have with the creative force with the god force mm -hmm. you know and, you know, however you choose to perceive it, whichever name you wish to give, it is your perception, you see, that is Did the magic. Find, as a tutor, I know, like, in my early days, I used to think, oh, well, I'm only here to, uh, to give. That's what my role is. And I used to find it, I don't anymore, but I used to find it really hard to ask them for help back. So I used to think I was being selfish and being, being a healer wasn't about being selfish, but... Over years, I've learned you, that to give is to receive. And the the stronger you receive back and giving, and that's that balance, like you said, the more beautifully it flows. But in the beginning, it always felt like, no, you can't do that because that's selfish because you're asking for you. But no, really, you must. Yeah. Because, because what we have to do, you see, is is when you look at how how energetically we create this most sacred of act what comes together within that moment it's how you are feeling it is your energy it is the atmosphere you create it's the energy of those you work with it's how they are feeling so you have to bring all of that into this wonderful calmness this mm -hmm. wonderful presence before you even start <laughs> and then you move from that point and 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 so I will always have before I start to work, I always have my time. I always have my 10 minutes with the power. Mm -hmm. And then in that in those moments, I know that I'm loved. Yeah. Strange thing to say, but you feel in those moments unconditional love. Yeah. I mean, all all mediumship is a form of entrancement, it's an altered yeah. state of consciousness. And, and we know that the more that you move into the experience of mediumship, the deeper an entranced state it becomes. Yeah. Because the greatest reading you ever give, you never remember. The greatest message you give, you never remember. It was like, that was marvellous. But what, what, what did I say? Yeah. And you're so there, you're touching it, but you're experiencing it. You see at, at the same time. And then also, you know, it's not just what we learn. It, 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 it's also how you speak to people. Because okay. that's part of what I teach as well, is, is not only the preparation of ourselves within that moment, but it's also the way that you speak to people and using the energy of the voice as a mm. calmative, as a healing, as a meditation tool, but also as the voice of communication. Mm. Because ultimately, the greatest mediumistic experience is the becoming. I do believe that. You can have such moments of clarity where you are the person in the spirit. You, you literally take on that moment, that character, that personality, that emotion. And that sometimes is really mind-blowing. So imagine if you haven't got your own stability and you're attempting yeah. to do that. If you're not careful, your own emotional system can be overwhelmed. 
mm. within such moments. So we learn, you see, all emotion flows through me and beyond me. Yeah. I am always with it, but I am never of it. You can't be, you mm. see, because we deal with situations that are of life. And sometimes, you know, life will break your heart, but you mustn't let it, not while you are the media. You cannot, because you cannot fulfill the sacred task, fall apart afterwards, but not during. So it's, it's wonderful, really, the way it, it comes together. And what I, what I believe more and more is everybody is trying to get somewhere. Yeah, no one's enjoying the journey. Yeah. Exactly. Of it. Everyone's trying to get somewhere. But then when you stop, look how far you've come. Mm. And that more and more what we've got to look at is, yes, you know, there is that burning desire within you. But look where you are today. Mm -hmm. Look how those steps that you've taken have brought you to this moment and, and this realisation of where you are today. And I find that in readings, you know, with people. And 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 what you do is is as you're talking about that, you say, now just look. Look where you've come from. Look where you are now. And look ahead. And don't look back. Mm -hmm. Because the past holds no power over you, only the power that you allow it to have. And that is such a learning of life within the transformation you know, of of this journey. Um, it's an, an incredible, um, it's limitless. And what I would say to people is do not limit the limitless potential of who you are and always give yourself permission to experience, you know. And, and you know, I don't follow necessarily all these different levels. What I say is you are where you are. It is a stepping stone to somewhere else. Embrace that and allow it to unfold, mm -hmm. you know, with, with, within that moment. We all have aspects, you know, within our lives that, um, and this is part of the duality of the sensitivity, you see, because within the sensitivity, it touches the subconscious. Your subconscious is your life computer. And within your life computer is every emotion, everyone you've ever known, everything you've ever experienced. And that when you are within that moment of sensitivity, sometimes what rises from the subconscious is, can I do it? Am I good enough? Should I be doing it? My knees are knocking. And therefore, what we have to learn is, are we worthy? Yes, we are worthy. I am the medium, the most sacred words ever spoken within the universe, the first words of creation. I am that. Yeah. And that within that moment of becoming, and that's the greatest step, really, is, is the trust, is the confidence. And the questioning of that, you see, comes from aspects of the past. No two ways about it. And so the transformative energy of the journey is about realising, am I good enough? Yes, you damn well are. Do I have this ability? Everyone has a connection to the divine source of all life. And I defy anyone to say anything different. And if you do, then come and see me and I'll put you right. <laughs> I've, honestly, I've seen teachers destroy people by saying, you know, I've, I've even had people in a class and they've been doing so well. And I had a girl come in um, after lunch and her face, I said, my darling, whatever's the matter with you? And she said, somebody has just told me this, this, this and this. And I said, oh, did they really? I said, did they record it for you? She said, oh, yes. I said, have you got it? She said, oh, yes. I said, can I see it? She said, oh, yes. I said, put it in my hand. She said, there it is. So I said, see this? Threw it over my shoulder and in the bin. No one has any right to destroy another person. I agree. To say that they cannot. Because really, we are the keepers of life. We are the nurturers of life. And, you know, there will always be a jewel in the crown, and that is 
that which is meant to be. And you know, not everyone necessarily is going to be a medium. Heavens to Betsy, why would you? <laughs> no, honestly. It's not the easiest path, is it? Is it? No. Well, it, it is as it is. But what it can do is it can open the doorway to the realisation of your sensitivity yeah. and to associated aspects. Many people who come to me, they don't want to be a medium. What they want to be is themselves. Yeah. They want to find the core of their sensitivity and then use it in any of the myriad ways of life. That can be in lecturing, it can be mm -hmm. in healing, it can be in counselling, can be in any aspect for none is greater than the than, than the other, really. It's just yeah. a more spiritual pathway, isn't it? Well, I think it's recognising because, you know, people also say that, well, you know, the spiritual aspect is a practice. Well, it may be a practice, mm. but it's also a way of life. Yeah. A way of reverence and mm. a way of being. And I think more and more, we are all seeking to find our place of belonging. Mm. And that is also survival, you see. And that's where the nurturing of self and the realisation of self um, comes into being. I've seen it too many times with so many people, you know, who come back, you know, and it may be several years later, and then all of a sudden they've found their way. And then you know you've done your job. Yeah, it's a timing, isn't it? And not everybody's on the same time path line, are they? Well, this is it, you see, because um, the the eternal unfolding journey of the soul is also dependent upon the life experience. You know, my father, for instance, was one of the most spiritual men, and I adored my father. But I asked him once about something to do with the spirit. And he just said to me, he said, you know, I appreciate what you what you are interested in, but I don't really want to discuss it. And yet he was one of the most beautiful human beings that I've ever had the privilege to know. And so his connection to the spirit was of the earth. You know, mm -hmm. so it's it's multifaceted in, in, in the way. And I think what is beautiful, you see, is that we don't have to prove it. We haven't got anything to prove at all. Yeah. I used to have, um, when I'd come back from being away and I would go to the college and I'd be very tired, you know, like one o'clock in the morning. And then the people who'd pick us up uh, would get to know where we were going, of course, and to know what we were doing. And then invariably you'd get a dear soul who'd say, prove it to me, prove it to me. And I just, I said, oh, dear, here we go. And I say, well, I don't really have to, do I? And he says, well, well why, 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 why not? I said, because I said, if you're right and there is no continuation, then it won't matter, will it? And if <laughs> I'm right, you and I will have a conversation. <laughs> so you haven't got to prove it at all. Yeah. I mean, yes, you know, Mediumship itself is the continuation of life and communication is the proving of the continuation of life. But you can't really convince anyone. I don't, don't believe that you can. I believe it is something of the heart and that it is something that you recognise within yourself. And it may be that you only need that one confirmation and then you go on in life. Yeah, and it's absolutely fine and wonderful. Yeah, and everybody is different, and and that's why I always believe, you know, be it for a reason, a season, or a lifetime, aspects come into our life, they leave their mark and presence amongst us. And you know, you may have the calling, you know, and 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 that's wonderful. But it's it's got to be also a part of that which resonates with you. Um, mm -hmm. I, I I do believe that, and not everyone um, sees it through to the blossoming. Yeah, and maybe that's meant to be because you know maybe that is you know the divine cause of all of it. You know that many are called but few are chosen. In which in which to do it, in which 
you know, to follow it. I know within my life that if I hadn't have followed this pathway, then I would not have been here. You know, there was a point in my life when I was between 16 and 21 where, you know, it, it could so easily have gone the other way. I did everything everybody told me not to at least twice just to make sure. <laughs> and yeah. then one day a lady came into my life, Mrs. Thomas, and um, it was a very bad time and she just stood in front of me and all of a sudden this presence of power came and she looked at me and I didn't know who she was. And she said, I don't know what you're thinking of doing. She said, but you mustn't. And it was amazing because from that moment, my life changed. And then the spirit said, within five years, you will lose everybody that you're connected to at this time. I thought, you're mad. I thought, no way on this earth. It took two years and everybody was gone. Wow. A whole new set of people into my life um you know that nurtured me and and they did i mean bless their hearts when i used to when i was developing um on a monday afternoon the ladies of the church would gather we would have tea and they'd sit for me and they would help me to sit for the trance and they would sit for me for the connection of the spirit and we'd meet up on a monday afternoon around my friend's house um beautiful really very blessed you know, in that way, uh, to be nurtured by the spirit. And now, of course, um, I have the opportunity to to live that passion because I love teaching. I, I love to see people fly. I bring them into the nest. We nurture. Um, we show them how and say, now you fly. You fly and be the best angel you can ever be. Mm. And that really is, is what it should be. And then those that come with broken wings, you bring them something that is called hope. And within that, they are healed. You know, to see someone's eyes who have lost someone um, and they are so devastated. And then all of a sudden, as you talk to them, and then you see that hope flood back into the eyes. Yeah. You see the love radiate mm -hmm. from them that they know that they're not lost, they're still with them. Yeah. That they're still a part of you and I and everything else. Colin, that's beautiful. Can I just bring your attention? We are getting questions, but I could sit and listen to you all night. <laughs> I ramble, you see, once no, I start. No, but I'm it's, like it's wonderful. It, it's, it's almost mesmerizing. Everything you said is so on point, but so heartfelt. Yeah. And, it's, and I, I'm sure people at home would concur with me that, it's just just the way you express the beauty of spirit and the expression of spirit through mediumship is a wonderful thing. So quickly going to jump into some messages. Yeah. Maya, my hi Maya, she's watching tonight. She's asked um, from her point of view, how can I close off from negative uh, or from negativity? And I'm guessing that's from situations and people around her absolutely yes because th this is also part of the sensitivity you see the power of the empath when you can pick up everybody's thought and energy and then if you've got the negativity i mean equally they can drain you yeah you know yeah. um so what you need to remember is that you are a living light of presence and that if you're going into situations and one of the things that I have always done is that when I'm finished being in, in a moment of sensitive, I take a few deep breaths and I visualize everything moving into a calmness, moving into a stillness. And then, then just very gently keeping all of my energy with me, feet upon the ground. And then I may look around a little bit to make sure that my own sensitivity is, is in a position where I can then be in a part of the physical world and the physical energy. Remember um, that within you is the greatest light of the universe. Remember surrounding you is the greatest light of the universe. Where forever love and light exist, nothing else can dwell. And if you have got somebody who is you know, quite negative, or you're going into a situation of negativity, then just move your presence into that nurturing. Surround yourself with your own light, with your own love. 
you know um it's very interesting in in hundreds and hundreds of years ago they they believed in mirrors and they would then surround themselves with mirrors and and visualize mirrors and that anything that was projected towards them would bounce back to the giver and also if you are in a very difficult situation be it of anger be it of annoyance you know if somebody is disagreeing with you send them love it's the greatest power of the universe and it takes away from them their ability to reflect upon you either with negativity or with anger but also know that you can do it you know remember the living light just bring your light into a quietness into a stillness i am not receptive you see when we have an impression whether it's negative whether it's happy and as soon as we go what's that we open the door to it and it can influence us so don't open the door just keep in your bubble of love and just say well you know i appreciate you um you know who is it who had that wonderful saying i love you but i do not understand you <laughs> And it can be in a situation, it can be with people, it can be with anything, you know. Um, love is universal. I mean, I may not understand you, but I can still love you. And then all of a sudden it takes away that sense. What we have to remember is thought is a living force. Also, you see, and never return anger with anger. Because all it will do is double the anger. And all it will do is create more of the same within ourselves. Try and always focus on the positivity and the love that we create. And if you are in a negative um, environment, then visualize love on the walls. And all of a sudden you change the atmosphere. Project love to the negativity. Then all of a sudden it changes because it, it won't stay the same. The atmosphere just changes and realize you see that you can do it but when within our own power of the empath as i said earlier then you know why you're affected by negativity because your sensitivity is too open what you need to do is either set boundaries within yourself or within others you know and say well god bless you but just leave me be <laughs> Sorry, that one's resonating with me. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I don't see well anyone well. now anyway, so it doesn't mm. affect me in the slightest. It's like, um, you know, I'm in my little home, in my little office, and then that's lovely for me. So. No, I had to, I resonated with that. I would, I do, sometimes I think I can, you, you heal, you help heal a situation or a person, and you keep doing it and doing it and you do all the right things. And then I think I was shown another fit where lots of negativity came back on me. So I surrounded it in love and then sent it out and said, look, I just give you so much love and I just hope you can find your inner love and peace. Perfect. I wish you well. And then I got a bombardment of more aggressiveness. So I was like, you know, I just surrounded the person in love and I've just left it. Because I just think if you're not ready, I can't I can't do it for you. You've got to do it yourself. But you've also That's got to so really. true. Mm. Ab absolutely. Because really what it's doing is, you know, when you begin to accept it, you see you're taking on their negativity. Yeah. And, and I was like, no. <laughs> yeah. And we always have to watch that in especially within healing, within mediumship. Um excellent. Kate Smith is just sharing her love with you. Yeah. Love oh, you beautiful. And There's some lovely messages. If you get a chance to go through the messages, people have put some beautiful comments on here. Yes, they have. Um, they are, sorry if I've missed anybody. Carol, hi, Carol Phillips. She's watching from YouTube. Uh, she's asked a similar sort of question. How would you suggest an empath learns to stop taking on so much sorrow from the media, mm. from, from other sources other than topics in their life like a relationship so i guess it's a similar kind of thing colin isn't it what you it is really i mean i think you know one of the hardest things is to recognize our own and and to install our own boundaries yeah you know and you know remember that the creative force of the universe is the power that knows all understands all and loves all 
can mark the fall of a single bird and the growth of a blade of grass. So therefore, when you create and you connect to the universe, you are then sending your thoughts, your love, your energy in an absolute positive way in, in, that can then affect these different situations. But I think also one of the greatest challenges of the sensitive and, and, and of the medium is to recognise that actually there is something within us that is not as others, that there is, that there is something there where you have to learn um you know to be to be um careful of your own sensitivity and um a wise very wise person said to me once you know colin you've got to learn to love what's good for you and um, i wasn't best pleased with the advice i have to say at the time but as the years moved on you know we learn to stay away from certain situations and and what i loved uh leanne was what you said that you actually learn to recognize to say you know i've done my best I, i'm doing my best but i cannot take that on and yeah. and, and and you have to and that's the setting of boundaries mm. so i think know, sometimes as a healer people think that when they come to you you're going to magically get rid of everything they've got in their life and they're going to walk out differently. Yeah. And I always say you've got to, I always say be present in the moment and surrender and mm. you will get from it what you need for this moment in time. Absolutely. But if you've walked in and you have expectations, I can't feel them. You've got to do that yourself. No, I, 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 I totally agree. And, you know, I think once the seed is planted within ourselves, we start to learn, you know, how we can then deal with these different situations. Mm -hmm. And one thing that we must not do is to start to create either a stress within ourselves mm -hmm. or this sense of, um, I should have done better. Yeah. because it serves nothing and yeah. all it does is compound it mm. what you must do is you must honor what you do and say this is what i did what did i learn from that and then it's a positivity you mm. see because i'm such a believer you see that you've got to give back to the power you know even if it is well do you know i did that and that went quite well mm. now let's see what else we can do yeah and not be destructive, because we can also be destructive, mm. but also to learn to recognise that there's qualities within ourselves that we just have to work on the balance. You know, some some people who are not so sensitive would just shrug things off. Yeah. Someone who is of the sensitivity would be on the roof for a fortnight. <laughs> yeah. I used to be. <laughs> yes, exactly. I mean, yeah, those took a long time, and I learned... People used to say boundaries and they used to go, oh, but I need to be open all the time and I need to do this. But actually, the older I've got, the boundaries are so important. You can be there, <laughs> but you're laughing, yeah. But it is important to have them you and go, be. no, I've given you and I've helped you as much as I can, but yes. I'm self-preservation. <laughs> exactly. And, and, and I think that's really where the learning, you know, slowly comes, comes into being. You know, the more that you can commune and become one with the power, the more you release into this light and into this world. And and that eventually, you see, you become it. I, I, it is a great becoming. I, I, I do believe that. So the guidance is, is, is almost in, an inspiration. And you start to follow that inspiration. I mean, look at the Claire Knowing, for instance. It comes yeah. from nowhere and yet can lead you to the greatest riches within mm. your knowing. And yet it's the one we trust the least. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and so, you know, start, start, start looking at your sensitivity in a way that can guide you inspirationally within it, because mm. there is an essence, there is a power, there is an energy that has been with you since before you were born. And I know it. And so if you can start to take time just to find 
that moment of quiet and then really allowing just this union of the two worlds to come together and and the union of our own spirit with the spirit world that's when the learning takes place more than ever because when there is an interchange of energy between the world of matter and the world of the spirit there is a refining there is a learning and it may not be vocal mm -hmm. that's the point you may not even know um, that you're learning I mean look at the wonderful avatars the gurus they never said a word they just sat yeah. and within the blessed moment that was created within the stillness all of a sudden you became enlightened you began to know yeah. because it was the power that guided you mm. I think and we live such fast-paced lives though don't they these yeah. days people are so fast-paced all the time if you I know I've a few times I've said to people, just take time out and just whether it's be going for a walk or exactly. meditating. And when you say meditation, it can be in anything. I can say, go draw a picture, go do some coloring. Basically. Yeah. Get, get your feet dirty in the garden, go digging stuff up. Anything that just gets you out of your head space and into your heart and Absolutely. just allow that. But people are so fast paced. It's trying to find that moment in time to do it. Well, we do. And I have a wonderful saying that God would always love 10 minutes, but we'll settle for five. Yeah. <laughs> so you can't say, you know, that, um, you know, because this is what is so wonderful and so universal within all of it is, is that, yes, you, you can have the ritual side of it, you know, where you sit, you like a candle, you do the incense, you listen to your music. But also life itself can be within the same meditative state. As you say, in walking, in a picture, in the garden, it can be anywhere. Yeah. Anywhere that you find your place of belonging, you are naturally connecting to the power of all life. Yeah. 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 So I tell my clients, it's like when they say, oh, I can't do any of that stuff. And I'm going, do you have a coffee in the morning? They're like, yeah, I went, oh, go outside and have it barefoot. Just stand in the garden and listen. Mm -hmm. You're grounding, you're feeling and you're having your coffee all at the same time. Another great question here from Sarah Day. I'm going to quickly flash it up. I'll read it to you, Colin. How do you know when is the right time to work for spirit? I feel like I'm on the cusp of it because of what I keep receiving, but I can't quite interpret what they're trying to show me. Ah. I guess there's a lot of people in Sarah's position. Absolutely. That's telling us that you've just got to work on building your energy. Yeah because we've got what we call the three the three stages of perception. And the first one is that you're aware of part of the vision, but you don't know what it means. The second part is that you're aware of the vision and it's got a feeling that comes with it. The third aspect of that is that you are aware of the vision, you are aware of the feeling, the atmosphere, and there's knowledge connected to it. Now, Sarah, the fact that you're experiencing what you're experiencing tells me that it's there. That's the hard part. It is yeah. there. Right now, now what you've got to do is you've got to just embrace that, you see, and then work on just building your connection to it. So say if you see, you see something and you have an experience of it and this is when we are all different you may see it feel it hear it know it taste it smell it etc etc but however you're experiencing or having your visions then almost like a mirror you merge with it you see and then the feeling and the knowing takes you into the atmosphere of it so say for instance i see a picture and it's uh somebody getting married there's the bride, there's the groom, and there's the father standing beside the groom. And then I could say, well, there's a really happy picture here. Somebody's getting married. I've got the, the bride, the groom, and the man standing beside. Yes, that's right. But then as soon as I focus upon it with my feeling and my knowing, the father passed six months after the wedding. It was the greatest moment of his life to see his son yeah. settled and married. <sighs> And then you see from that becomes oh. something more. Yeah. 
and and also because several things can come at once within that um sometimes what i do is i write down my experiences if i don't fully understand them and then as i move along i may then begin to understand them because you're also um starting to find your own way of working you know some people are very symbolic aren't they now a symbol everything in life is in one of three categories either a name a place or a situation so when you see something symbolically it has a meaning in one of those three categories so you blend with it to find the answer and this is such a good point for you sarah what can happen you see is that you see something and then your mind jumps in and says that's it and of course it isn't because your mind is giving you an answer before the power has unfolded it. And that's why the seat of the power is here. It's the soul, whether you consider it to be the hara, the seat of the soul, the anamkara, the soul friend, or whether you consider it to be the heart. So when you have um, an experience, then blend and merge with the experience. Take a moment. You know, you see, um, say, for instance, I've got Leanne here. I can see you, but I do not know you. Fair? We've never met. But then as soon as I move into my sensitivity, I see the picture. I see I see the image. And then immediately I know that you are somebody who's always believed in wishes and dreams and castles in the air. <laughs> and as a child, you used to create your own reality make up your own stories is that right probably i've always <laughs> been so, in my own world <laughs> well and and so what it's doing is you're starting to learn you're starting to know and you're beginning to understand if you look at you orically you've got all the blues so you're a born communicator but it's the, also the color of inspiration it's the color of healing but it also has a devotional element to it as well so that tells us that you're very connected, that you have a very strong personal belief in the creative force. Yeah. It's the guiding force of, 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 of your life and, and, and of your work. And the inspiration touches the creativity, touches this, touches that. So you, you see, you can see something, but you don't know it. And that's, Sarah, what you're saying, really, is that you're starting to to see the images and you're starting to experience now what you've got to do is merge and blend with it and then let it speak to you let it unfold more and the way to do that you see is with the practice because the more that you practice the more that you learn the more that you begin to unfold um, within it and and i always say to people you know when you're ready people will come and, you know, I, I would always say to people, you know, never do too much too quickly because of your own energy and energy levels. Just do one and then maybe do two, but do, do the second one straight after the first one because the energy you build in one will carry you into the second. Never do four or five when you haven't done them before because your first one may be really good, your second one may be good, your third one may be iffy, and your fourth and fifth one, no, because you haven't got the energy to sustain that level of concentration. And that's what we learn, you see, is to hold that fixed point of focus and then to begin to experience, but to hold it, you see. And, and you know, 12 minutes, and the human mind starts to wander 20 minutes and it's gone. So what you're creating is something that's not a natural state of mind. To hold that point of concentration and stillness. So, so would, you be, would, uh, would you be best to start with people you don't know? Or um, would you be best to sit with um, like friends that she doesn't know a lot about or work colleagues? Or Well, it can be. Um, it can be a variety. Um, the only thing that with friends and family 
is that you may all of a sudden become aware of something you know. Yeah. And yeah. when you become aware of something that you know, you've got to say it anyway, because if you stop it, you will alter and you will stop the flow mm. and say, well, I know that, but I've got this, this, this and this. But even with somebody you know very well, there is always something that you don't know. Mm. And, yes, and also, right. it, it, it's... Um, it's a wonderful way when people know what you're interested in. It's amazing how many people volunteer. Yeah. <laughs> Me, please. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And 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 so, you know, and and it, it's interesting because sometimes I believe the universe steps in and helps. And that sometimes the universe just guides us in a way that opens another door. Yeah. And 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 you know. Oh, she's put a comment up there. I'll put that up so you can see it. Yeah. She put a thank you, Colin. Oh, you're you're so welcome. And 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 really, um, listen to what it's telling you. The fact that you're saying what you're saying means that already it's starting to formulate. Otherwise, you wouldn't have the thoughts you see. And and often, you know, within our own thoughts to do with our own development and our own unfolding journey something just seems to be talking to us you see so listen to what it's telling us and the key to everything is the conditions that we create if you can create the best conditions within yourself within the atmosphere within your connection to the person that you're working with you stand a better chance of absolute success and if you if you are questioning what you're doing then your mind is too present in your process and it's saying you're not focusing on the power you're allowing your mind to take control and then you see the mind becomes the the, the storyteller not the power and then you get what your mind tells you rather than what yeah. the power wants to give you yeah so I've got a question. <laughs> There's Ooh. obviously lots of newbies on here as well. So earlier on, you were saying about all the different um, parts to mediumship. So you've got your clairvoyance and that. Could you just give us a brief um, description on all of them so that people know? Yes. Oh, abs ab ab absolutely. Now, I spoke earlier about the clair knowing which is one of the strongest gifts of this age. Its real name is claircognient, claircognience, can't even say it, you see. And that's when um, intuition is also linked to that. It has a sense of knowing to it, but it doesn't necessarily have a destination. It's like there's no origin to it. It just comes. And so in life, when something comes to you, like some, some, someone comes into your mind, for instance, don't just dismiss it, investigate it. When you have a feeling about something, don't just dismiss it, empower it, find out why it's coming into your mind. Find out why, you know, your, your sister or your sister-in-law is coming into your mind. Find them up and say, what's up, what's happening? And you'll find that's why. So you're empowering it and you, you're coming it into being. One of the most natural senses is what we call the clairsentience, which is the feeling. And the feeling touches the emotions. And so the feelings and the emotions can actually take us into the presence. That first moment can actually lead us into a story. You know, what we tend to do is we tend to jump in. I've got your father who is this, this, this and this. Well, there's a whole story before then when you meet him. And the feeling and the knowing will take you into the essence and the presence you see and in that first moment of feeling and presence it can be i love you this overwhelming sense of love this yeah. overwhelming sense of regret this overwhelming sense of i'm sorry i'm angry yeah and that can often give you the message before you even start yeah i love you i never said goodbye and that can create the healing in the way that that comes. So you've got the feeling, which is really of the power itself. The feeling and the knowing are intrinsically connected. Now, the clairvoyance actually comes from the soul. 
you yeah. see. So here you may see something, but here it tells you what it means. Here you see the house. Here you go in the door. Here you see the box. Here it tells you what's in it. So there's a combination there. And it's usually through the feeling and the knowing that the clairvoyant image comes into being. Now, that image can be symbolic, which is what we've covered. It can also be of the spirit. It can be of the physical world, depending on where your attention is within that moment. And I always say, you see, if you're very visual, you don't always remember to feel. Yeah. If you're very feeling, you don't always remember to look. If you're very seeing and feeling, you never remember to listen. You see? And the clairaudience, ah, now that's the beauty. That's the one. Because if you are clairaudient, that has to be the greatest way of receiving information. Because if you are repeating what a voice is telling you, you, yep. you're less likely to get it wrong true clairaudience is subjective it is a subjective thought form it can be objective but it is individual to the medium one of the greatest clairaudience was a lady called helen hughes in one demonstration she gave 48 first names second names and addresses wow she once demonstrated with Estelle Roberts to 8,000 people. Wow. Oh. Estelle Roberts. Now, she was phenomenal, but she was also a direct voice medium. And she used to demonstrate at the Royal Albert Hall to between three and 5,000 people. <laughs> and the people who sat in the first few rows could hear the whispers of the spirit as they gathered to speak. Awesome. Wow. It's it's incredible. So the clairaudience is, unless it is a natural gift of the medium, such as Joan of Arc, she was very naturally clairaudient. Yep. And um, she never denied her voices until that moment that it took her. She still maintained that it was the voice of God. And it's not usually the first of the facets to grow. The power base, as I call it, um, is really built over the time of sitting, of meditating, of sitting in the power. You're building your power, you see. You, you are empowering yourself. This is why in olden days people used to sit in a circle. And the person who was the aspirant, who was the student, would always sit next to the developed medium. Because like osmosis, the stronger medium lifted the weaker vision and it stayed open, you see. And that's why, you know, you should try and sit on a regular basis because you build your power base. You know, there's a wonderful song, where I sit is holy, holy is the ground, forest, mountain, river, listen to the sound, great spirit circles all around me. And you see, when you start to build that, you begin to create it you see and so the clairaudience is is an exceptional gift and but needs to be developed and i and i teach that separately and one of the ways that you can bring on the clairaudience in the old-fashioned days mind you i'm old-fashioned people used to listen to a seashell and you would learn to tune into the different tones in the seashell you see and now one of the things you can do is sit in the quiet, create the meditative state and listen to the sounds of the house mm -hmm. and focus individually on the sounds of the house. Then do it by an open window, focus on the outside of, of, of the house. Or, you know, if you're out and you're sitting having coffee or something and there's conversations going on around you, listen to one conversation, not in a, not in a, not in a stalky way that gets you arrested, no, no, no. <laughs> but you just listen to sound. Officer Colin the things... said that we could listen. You can, I can hear the conversation <laughs> now. <laughs> and then one of the things I do is um, I'm such a great believer in 
is the wonderful quotation from Lewis Carroll, be it in the garden of memories or the palace of dreams, you and I will meet again. And who is to say which one is real? And that you sit in the quiet, you go into, you go into the memory, the corridors of time, and you relive conversations, emotions, people, time, places. And what you're doing is you're becoming familiar with it. Yeah. And then, of course, you see, when you're with the spirit, it's the garden of memories. It's the same thing. So mm -hmm. you, you train yourself, but you've got to do it. Um, I remember Glenn Edwards once, um, and, and we were all doing it, and we were all little students. We were all trying to listen, and nobody could listen or hear. And then he came up behind me, and he got his big hands like this, and he went like this, and he said, now, my boy, what can you hear? And honestly, it was like my head blew off because he created the power and then all of a sudden you could hear and, mm -hmm. and that's fascinating you see so the clairaudience um it is a thought form not a physical voice yeah and true clairaudience because often i hear people saying and your mother is telling me no, no, no. and then the person says no so what you're saying that mama doesn't know what she's saying it's not the mother, it's the mind of the medium. If it's true clairaudience, every single word should be 100% correct. So, and then you've also got the clairolfactriance, which is the tasting and the smelling. I used to work with a lovely medium called Leela Kay. She's still with us. She's quite old now. And she had this gift where she would stand on a rostrum and demonstrate and she could tell you what brand of scotch it was because she could taste it. Oh. Yeah. And she knew all the different brands. We used to work at the SAGB together in London, Belgrave Square, when it was still there. And um, phenomenal. And she'd say, she'd go, oh, it's bells. And then the person would start laughing and say, oh, yes, it is. And then she'd know, you see. Um, and, and this is the gift of mediumship, you see, because that which we are familiar with is easy to come into being. You know, every year I, I work in America, not for the last couple, but I remember going to um, the Statue of Liberty in Ellis Island and then seeing the story of Ellis Island, you know, all those who come seeking. And, and it was the doorway to New York. And there was two New Yorks, I believe. And um, the week later, I was doing a reading, and it was all about Ellis Island. Now, if I hadn't gone, and if I didn't know the story, would it have come so easily? I doubt it yeah. in the same way. So what we do as we're learning is become as familiar with as many things as possible. Yeah. Awareness and perception is unique to each one of us. So what you do is make yourself aware. Take yourself on a journey. Go to your front door when you go out to work. Look at the front door. Look at the handle. Open the door. Look at the steps going down. How are the steps? Look at what's in front of you. Look at the trees. Look at the colours. Look at the leaves. Look at the buildings. How are the buildings made? If a lorry goes by, what's written on the lorry? If you see um a sign what's written on the side and what you're doing is you're opening your sensitivity um to be more aware of life because you see in life we're not you know how many times do we go down the street and we see something i did it today i was taking the dog for a walk and i saw these windmills and i thought well how did they get there because i've never seen them before and yet they've been there for years so we don't always take notice of what's Being present yeah. yeah so we start to learn how to become more aware and this is why as a medium what you need to be doing is you need to be observing your process not interacting but observing you should know how you do what you do yeah because you miss on average 45 percent of all information that's a lot of information that's a lot that is but then and also um your own life and your own life experiences will link you into different types of information more easily yeah someone who shies away from death 
will never talk about those last moments because they won't be aware of it because they won't want to be. Yeah. You know, and, and also be open to every experience. You know, uh, I laugh sometimes because somebody will say to me, well, I don't get names. And I think, well, you never will, darling, because you've just negated it before you've even started. Because you're saying, no, I don't. So therefore, no, you won't. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's important to be open, to be receptive. But also, and, and, and I think, what empowers you? You know, what, what, what moves you? You know, it's like there'll always be a piece of music that just sends you somewhere. Yeah. That's what you want to listen to because yes. it will take you on a journey. Yeah. And, and when it does, you know, and it's like meditation. If you listen to the music, it's not the music, it's the power of the music you want to focus on. Because what may do is you listen to the music and you've got rainbows and fluffy clouds and unicorns. Well, you'll have a lovely time, but you'll get nowhere. Because you'll be in what I call la la land, <laughs> which I've made a career of, by the way. So I think... You know, um, it, there's, there's so many different aspects to it. Absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. Can I be selfish and ask a question from my own point of view? Yes. Anyway. My, uh, how important is prayer in your practice, Colin? Personal prayer, always. And I have a very simple one because prayer is an invocation of the heart. It mm. reminds the soul of its own divine connection. And the simplest prayer can be, be with me. And I always have a very simple one. And that is, I always go into the heart because I'm a great, that's that's my thing. Yeah. And I always just say, from the highest that is within me to the highest of the universe, I dedicate myself to the service of the spirit. The way of the spirit is my way. The light of the spirit is my light. I manifest my power right here, right now. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, the presence in the atmosphere begins to grow. And, and depending on who you are and, and how you resonate within that. Um, and, and I think sometimes we can get hung up on prayer because you think it's got to be flowery. It's got to be this. It's got to be that. No, it hasn't. Yeah. It's just got to be of the heart. And that can simply be I dedicate myself to this time and this moment be with me yeah and it's done yeah and it's there and it, it's it's a part of you and i and of the universe and everything that is within it so um i've just just one one thing here <clears throat> Oh, oh. <laughs> hello, it's so gorgeous. Oh my god, how good has your dog been? And he's been no. so quiet, so I'll carry on talking to you, but I've got to let him down. Yeah. <laughs> Bless his heart. He's oh, been boy. so well behaved. Go and find your father. <laughs> so oh, very nice. I've so got... so it's it's a personal journey. And our own connection to the power of all life is equally as personal. And um, true prayer doesn't even have to have words. I, I don't believe so. It's just that moment of, of you know, of, of being and, and of, of connecting. You know, um, the power of the earth, the sea and the sky brings us into the universe. And, and the oneness of all life. So um, find that which resonates within you as, as, as an individual and then embrace that and then bring it into your own words, however they may be. Yeah. yeah. It's a beautiful question, though. Mm, thank There's you. There's so many positive, so much positive feedback from so many people. Ask, and Carol Phillips is one. Also, uh, there was a gentleman. Where are you? I can't find it. It's typical when you want it. Um, oh, it's gone. Can't find it. Anyway, now it's gone. 
typical but there have been so many wonderful comments about tonight and all your knowledge that you've shared with us tonight it's been fantastic colin we have got well, some more questions are you doing them more well well colin I've we've been going started. for one hour 35 minutes oh well i'm still here so if if you want me to do a few more questions there is a there is a couple more how yeah. do you know if it's a good or bad spirit when i was 14 after father's death i felt like someone stroked my ear late at night woke up and say I, i'm assuming that's his saw a shadow of a person for a short time at the end of my bed and it happened over for several years then stopped that's from david thank you for your question david yeah well you you see um and this is what i often you know say to people you you have within you the greatest light of the universe and you're surrounded by light where forever light and love exist nothing else can dwell sometimes we experience something and we don't know what it is and it creates a fear within us mm -hmm. and that's a very real energy because i mean that's what voodoo is it's ruling by fear yeah and often when somebody passes to the spirit world what they'll do is they will create a moment and a time to create a sign to say i'm still here i'm still with you and so what it can be is it can be someone who is close to us but you're not recognizing it as someone who is who is close to you within that way and um what i would look at there within that moment would be was it your fear you experienced rather than what it actually was i mean for years every night when i used to lay my head to to to, to sleep i was aware of a presence in the room now as a child that unnerved me because i hated the dark yeah. really yeah and um so that wasn't really good for me. But then years later, a medium said to me, he said, you know, every night your grandmother comes and wishes you good night. And I thought, oh, it's granny. So it was my fear. Yeah, absolutely. Not the presence that was there. And now, you know, it's like, um, good night, everyone. So, um, and 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 so i'm not in any way taking away from your experience yeah. but i also believe you see that um that we are naturally surrounded by that light and and and, and by that love and and so i would put it into that category rather than any other i hope that answers your question a little bit uh and I think naturally we have this innate ability to fight or flight as well. That's, that's exactly. there as well. And that can block the truth of what's really there. I had a similar experience with my grandfather in my bedroom. I used to block it away. But once I realized it was a grandfather figure, it just shifted the fear away. We have another question here from Andrea. Hi, Colin. What do you make of it when someone can see spirit as clear as if they were alive? and also can speak with them i know someone with this gift but they don't want to develop it yet at least so this, this is true because uh clairvoyance uh can be subjective but it can also be objective so there are certain people who can see the spirit as clear as you and i yeah. and as you have rightly said you know at this time it's it's not quite right within their life to develop it but the time may come when they wish to and and so what i would say is that that you're recognizing it within yourself and i'm sure that there are times when that happens when you say something to someone and 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 then it creates the healing between the two worlds it brings something forward or helps someone within some way um but yes objective clairvoyance is is something that normally i see it as a vision upon a vision so i don't see it like as a solid person i see it as an image within an image it's a strange but it can be subjective and objective so i can see you and then know someone standing there beside you so that's how it works more for me mm. 
but I did once see the spirit world objectively um, and that was an amazing experience so um, and and I think you know in 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 life to accept that naturally is the great gift and just say well I, I I know that but the time is not quite right for me um, but it won't go away yeah and it's lovely yeah mm. such a gift as well mm -hmm. uh, Martin has made yeah. a good point can you see that Leanne yeah. Martin Lester I still talk to my mom and she died 22 years ago and I think that's from what Beautiful. you know from a mediumistic point of view, it's important that everyone knows that our loved ones are so close to Absolutely, us. yes. And and communication is, you know, I speak to my mum, I speak to my dad um, every day. Uh, my dad went 22 years, yes, this year, the 18th of June, January. And um, what we need to remember is that communication is a natural gift of life because it's called love. And that when you send a thought of love, it becomes a living prayer and a blessing appears in heaven. I do believe that. Yeah. And then mm. someone knows you're thinking of them. Yeah. And then they will show you that they're thinking of you, be it in a memory, be it in a feeling and, and or an emotion. Something comes into the mind. You know, I'm often doing something and then all of a sudden my mother comes into my mind. I think, oh, hello. And, and, and then just send a thought and say, well, that's nice. So absolutely, yes. They love it, don't they? Mm. But oh. they're not with us 24-7. No, and not at certain <laughs> times as well. No, because <laughs> not they, they want they, to be. Because uh, they are experiencing within the spirit, and within the spirit it is a life of progression. Equally as this life is one of unfolding journey, so it is within the spirit. And you cannot conjure the spirit and that when we enter into that sacred moment, I always say to my, the people who come seeking, I say, well, let's see who's here. And if you've sent your thoughts and wishes, the spirit will try and honour that. But if somebody doesn't want to come, then they won't come. Mm. It doesn't mean they don't love you. It just means that at that moment, within your own awareness, they're just not there, mm. you know creating that moment some people choose never to communicate doesn't mean they don't love us it just means that they've got no unfinished business or they just are okay you know it's mm. interesting isn't it and some people you just every single moment they're there it's like oh, there you are you know we're all different aren't we yeah I can remember as a like a young child, I used to always feel somebody sit on the end of my bed, mm. and I but I used to have, it used to be such a lovely feeling, mm -hmm. like it wasn't I was never scared by it. And then I remember when I had my children, um, they used to always say about a gentleman that used to stand at the end of their cot or their bed, and he would always give them medicine when they weren't very well, which was my granddad, mm. and I think that was beautiful. I think that that's wonderful. There's Xander as well. It was Xander. Yes, I know Xander very well from Sweden. He, he was singing your praises earlier, saying what a wonderful teacher you were. Yes, I know oh, very I well. I should say, oh, you're still here, thankfully. So uh, Liz as well, quick question from Liz. Do you think spirits have an energetic body that feels solid to them in the dimension they are in? That's a toughie. Well, it's a very interesting one. You see, the spirit world is an etheric world. The physical world is an etheric world, but the vibration of the spirit world is much higher. That's why when we communicate, we raise the consciousness. So there's a quickening that comes within it. Now, the spirit world is a world of light and mind. And so the power of mind to create can seem as real as you and I. And that's why many people, when they come back, um, they speak of the spirit world when they move into the spirit world as being very much like this world that everything that they see is is almost duplicated within the physical life and world and that when you reach a realization within yourself spiritually then you no longer need that and then your your own spirit can move forward beyond that but remember thou preparest the place before me so therefore it is created through the power of your own essence, energy and light. 
So you will gravitate naturally to what you create while you are here within this world. So it may be something that's very similar within it, you see. And, and, and so the spirit world is, has the ability to be in many places at once because it's a living energy. Mm-hmm. Strictly speaking, the spirit world no longer has form. It can't. It's no longer physical. And therefore, when we see the spirit world, it is as a sense of identification, but actually really they are in essence, they are not a physical person. So you perceive it as we perceive it, but it's not really in essence that. And so therefore, as we are within the spirit, it can be as real as we wish it to be. Can we have one last question, Colin? (laughs) Yes, of course we can. There's a gentleman that I know this is really important to him, Sean. Great question. Hi, Sean. Are our pets who've passed with us? Yes, without question. Because the soul is is spiritualized, it's humanized. And therefore, uh, Ashley Roberts was a great teacher and she often used to speak about the group soul of animals. But that once... Once an animal has been taken from its normal environment, and that means it's been humanized, it's been um, spiritualized in a way, then I truly believe, and I've proved it time and time again within readings, um, that they are still very much a part of life and of the journey of life. So, and 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 I will be honest with you, in, in many people's lives, they are absolutely as real as family. They are members of the family. So when they're loved, they are loved. And I certainly um, know that within myself and within my own journey of life. I did a reading once for a lady and she came in and she sat down and she bought these photographs. And I said, put them down, don't want to see them. Let's do the reading, see what happens. The next moment, all of a sudden, this lady walked into my vision and I knew it was the grandmother and she was leading this horse by the reins. And I have never seen such a beautiful chestnut horse ever. Ah. And so the reading unfolded and as it unfolded um, and then as it came to the end and then the lovely young lady, and I still remember her to this day, she overturned all these photographs and they were all of the horse the horse was her baby the grandmother brought the horse wonderful oh, no. so my dear one who asked the question yes they do because where forever love exists it, this, it exists for eternity and you will see them again and that's rather wonderful because you know when we have been even you know it's interesting because we can still be connected to people that we never even knew you know for instance you know you can have a a grandmother who takes a great interest in you and your life and yet she died before you were born and yet because of your life your journey she is connected to you because she watches over you i know that to be true my grandmother watches over me she passed before i was born Yes, and my mother watches over me with a saucepan just in case. <laughs> so, um, and, and that's the beauty of it, you see, because it's life. And there's, there's you know, the, the great mystery of life is called death, but there is no death. It was but one continuation from one state of existence to another. And, and that is the beauty of it, you see. Yeah. And many people, you know, perhaps they fear that moment of leaving this world and entering into the next. And that's where love and healing can support the soul upon its next journey of evolution. And many people, as they take that transition, I remember my grandmother, I used to give her healing every day and sit beside her bed and hold her hand and talk to her. And she said, oh, she said, I saw Frank today. I said, oh, did you, darling? She said, yes. And Uncle Frank was her youngest brother who died very young. And, and then it wasn't many weeks after that she passed. And, and people often have such experiences. And it's beautiful, you see, because, you know, they're preparing the way and saying, well, actually, we're still here. We still love you. 
um, and we're here for you and we will take you forward. And, and also as well, the last part I'll say with that, and I will shut up eventually, <laughs> is, is that some people choose, because a lot of people have, some of the, not all, but many people have this, this feeling, I wasn't there, you know, and they didn't, they weren't there at that moment, you know, or they'd gone out the room and then they passed. Well, you see, sometimes the spirit needs to be alone in order to let go. And it's not in any way that they don't love us. Yeah. It's just that they need the peace and the quiet in order to gently slip away. And, and a lot of people hold on to that and say, I wasn't there. Why wasn't I there? And the answer is, you know, maybe they just needed that moment of quiet to leave this world. You know, and that if you were there, you, you wouldn't hold them back because you can't. Um, you can't keep anyone longer in this life and world than is their time. Yeah. But everyone is different. You know, sometimes we need that moment of quiet just to say, it's now my time to leave this world. It's beautiful, really. That really is beautiful, yeah. Is it me? Can you feel that as well, Leanne? Yeah. Colin, you're such an amazing ambassador of spirit. It's, it's been an absolute privilege it's been lovely. The, the information. Well, you know, I, I've so enjoyed myself because it's it's really just nice just to chat because really that's that is the way of learning, you see. That's the way it was always done on the temple steps. People used to come and they'd speak, and as they spoke, they'd bring forth their ancient utterances and teachings, and the inspiration would come. And I think more and more that's what um it's what we learn from it within such yeah. moments. Yeah. I believe you're, you do your own mentoring program at the moment. You've got one. Yes, I do. Years. It's starting again in March um, and it's 11 months. And um, it, it takes through I have a year one, a year two, and there's a year three now from year oh, two. Okay. And um, it, it takes through every single aspect of your development. But what I do say to people is be prepared to work um, because it's, it's, it, it is a commitment for that period of time. And if you're interested, you can always email me or message me and I can explain it to you a little bit more because we go through all of the aspects. Um, and I think this is the third year that I've been doing it and it's been very successful. Um, but I keep you with me. And I always say to people, you know, once once you're with me, um, you're stuck with me forever. And that I'm always here if you need me. And that that's what we should always be. Yeah. You know, I may not always have the time to answer, you know, but um, really, I think more and more with the way of the world that it is, we should be there for each other, support each other in the best way that we possibly can. Yeah. Um, and and that's the, the the greatest joy really yeah yeah so have a look and there's free there's three free lectures on the website uh, about empowering deepening the evidence um there's three on there um and you're very welcome to those uh teaching lectures so everyone yeah i welcome. have I have listened and I would, yeah, I would recommend people jumping on and having a listen because they're worth, you know, tonight has been absolutely amazing. And I can't, we can't thank you enough, Colin, for your effort, for staying on longer because you haven't been particularly well. No. And you haven't coughed all the way through. No, well, it's amazing, isn't it? Because once I'm finished, I will start coughing. <laughs> um, but I, I have so enjoyed seeing you all and meeting you all. And um, thank you so much for your time. Yeah. No, honest. And for those of you who have listened, um, you know, although we are virtual, the presence and the power of the spirit is 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 universal. And whatever you're doing, you know, whatever is unfolding within you, within your life, within your journey, never give up, never give in, and don't let anyone say you can't, because you can. Softly, slowly, we begin to understand it. And we begin to unfold it. You know, you can't rush it. 
what you've got to do is give yourself time to understand it and to grow within it. And, you know, there's a wonderful saying, um, dance anyway. They may be coming for you in the night, so dance anyway. Dance in the joy of your spirit. So thank you all, and, and thank you for asking me. I've been honoured. God bless you. Thank yeah. you, Colleen. Yeah. All thank right. You. And, well and, and my love for both of you yeah. and for everyone. And, and um, God bless you, Colleen. We'll see everybody back here this time next week. Yeah, take Bye, care. Bye, everybody. Take okay. care. Take care. Bye. Take care. Bye. Bye. Bye.